So something I've been wanting in this room for a long time is an occupancy sensor when we walk in uh, for the lights. Currently we have this light switch here that turns it on and off. And I just, I'm, I'm tired of having to whack it when I walk in the room. Sometimes I forget. And I think it'd be better just to have an occupancy sensor here mounted on the ceiling that works in series with the switch. So we could either essentially enable or disable the occupancy switch with this. So if you wanted to walk in here and you didn't want the lights to turn off, you would just um, disable it and it wouldn't work when you walked in there. Otherwise you'd leave it on all the time and just walk in and have it work as, as wanted. Um, and we hate this boob light because it casts terrible shadows on the popcorn ceiling, makes it very obvious. I'm not in the mood to do popcorn ceilings right now. I have done them before, but this closet would take a long time to clear out. And I think with the down lights, well, we're gonna see, it's, I hope it's going to bring the focus off of the off of the ceiling and more on the on the actual clothing in here so this also looks kind of like a cave so my plan did the calculations for this and I have two six inch lights I'm gonna put in and split the difference between the junction box which is gonna serve as the mounting location for the occupancy sensor and first down light here in the middle between this light and that duct diffuser and then the second one back there not all the way because we have shelving there so you don't want to put it right against the wall but yeah it looks like two and a half feet um, from the wall is about right here so eyeballing it looks good I'm gonna bring up the measuring tape so what we got is the inner lights 360 PIR line voltage occupancy ceiling sensor and look at the voltage here it looks like it could take 120 um, incandescent incandescent lights load is 80 watts um, doing two leds maybe 60 watts each so that's good let's open this up so in the box we got ceiling sensor itself and supposedly oh, we've got some wire nuts with it now, supposedly this can fit on a ceiling electrical box, we're going to see. Yes, it does look like that is the case. We have two slide-in pieces. It looks like this is able to pop out slash rotate once it is wired in. But here's the other important thing is the UL sticker on there. Is take a screwdriver, a flat blade screwdriver, and fit it into that little tab right there and you wiggle back and forth and it pops out so, so just some more settings on here there is a light sensitivity setting uh, right here you can turn that to where it needs more light or less light in the room to turn on so you don't want it turning on whenever it's bright outside so that can be used to adjust that uh, mine's in a closet so it doesn't get that much light anyways, so it's probably gonna be on the on the highest setting there. The time here is used to see how long it, it, it leaves us energized once it's activated. Um, I'm probably gonna set that to like five minutes because we typically breeze in, grab our clothes and breeze out. The other dip switch here is vacancy and sensitivity. So you look at these guides here, it makes it pretty easy. So we don't want vacancy. We want this, to, it's, it's an occupancy sensor. So it activates or turns on whenever there is occupancy, there is an occupant in there. Now you can have the option to switch it to vacancy mode so then it turns on when it detects no motion. Uh, that's not what we want in this application. So that vacancy switch will be set to off. Now the sensitivity, it lets me pick 50 or 100%. I'm probably just gonna leave it at 100% and if it's too sensitive, uh, if I walk by and the outside and it, it activates, then it might knock it down to 50% or you could always use something to obstruct it so it's only looking down, you know, probably some electrical tape or some type of tape. That's the setup. So I check the wiring up top and all we got is a ground wire. We have one piece of Romex coming in that has a black and a white. So that is a neutral for the house and the switched hot leg from the switch. So you got black hot, you have one that's called neutral white, 
and you have one that's called load red. So what we want is this is going to tie into the black, so that's the switched leg. Pretend there's a switch on the other side breaking and making this contact, and that is our wall switch. So it has the ability to break or make the hot coming into this. Now this is going into the switch. The neutral is connected to the house neutral, just like normal. White goes to white. And then this red wire is the switched load from this device. So this red wire is going to go out to the two hots on our new, wire, new lights. So a wire nut is going to go onto this and go to the two hots. It will be black on those. And then white is all going to be wired together. So there we go. So we have your wall switch downstream or upstream of this hot. This switch makes or breaks space on the occupancy and you get your lights to turn on. That's how it's getting wired. Okay, once you got your spots mark on the ceiling, I just use the push pin to stick in the center of this, right where I want it on the center line of this room, and then you got to trace around it with a pencil. Now, <laughs> popcorn is actually really hard to trace over, but I mean, you're just getting a basic one. At least this stencil that it came with came with more of a rigid piece of paper or circle. So the deal is though, you're gonna be cutting this out and there'll be some trim covering it so it won't be as bad, but you gotta get around it. And remember when you cut it, you want to be able to cut on the inside of this. Don't cut on the outside or, or just make this line disappear. Um, <clears throat> because you can always, you can always cut off more material. You can't put more back when well, you can, but that's not um, what you want to do. What I'm using to cut these holes is a jab saw, because I'm old school and I had this already. I don't need to buy a whole saw. I'm only doing two, so it's not that bad. And the box is for to catch anything. So I'm just going to stick my arm in here, just like this. Do the jabbing. All, all the drywall dust comes into there. And I use a shop vac the whole time to suck it up too. And make sure you wear a respirator so you don't breathe this stuff in. And let's show you how they look before. I'll cut the holes right now. I'm going to go ahead and say if you ever have to buy remodel cans, do not buy this type that look like this. That's the remodel cans. Get either the, unless you just have to and you have no above ceiling access, these are terrible. These little clips, let me show you. These little clips that you have to push up. I can only supposed to push up flat. That one's good. That one's good. But then these two other ones do not want to push up. That one, see, still very wobbly. It's just barely making contact with the other side of the uh, drywall ceiling. So those aren't any good. Avoid if all possible. Um, just if you want to know how to hook up the lights to them. And hooking up the lights pretty easy. If you look in here, it's just a standard light socket for this. It's pretty easy. And that connects to the light here. And I want to show you before I put it up there. You see these little you clips? You squeeze them together. You fit one on each side. Sometimes it's easier to do one and then the other. But yes, you take, put them on the inside of those clips and it squeezes one side and it is fiddly. Be patient. And once it's in there, you make sure your gas gets in the right spot and you just slide it up. And it springs. And there, that one's done. 
Let me go show you the pancake style on the other side. These <clears throat> are much easier to deal with. So for this, you have these spring-loaded clips on the back. To put it, and you put it up through the hole, you just bend these back. As you go up through the hole, like this, bend them flat through the hole, and then these string down, and you got your little connection. You can handle everything upside, up on the upside. That's much easier. You can even get one foot in and let it go, and then put the other one in, and then there you go. So much better than those locking clips. Whoa, so much better than those locking clips. These types are way better if you can manage it. Even might even be better to, <clears throat> even if you didn't have attic access, I think it would be the best to get these anyways. Cut the hole, reach your hand in, put the electrical box in or rewire it and mount it and then hang that wire down connect the wire here and then pop it up in the ceiling again so that would be so much better i would i cannot recommend the uh other remodel installation full-on cans they're just terrible uh go with the led ones the only disadvantage to this is you have one piece so if this goes bad you have to replace this whole thing Whereas the other one, you just replace that piece, the can can stay in place. But installation wise, these are way better and I'd rather just replace these in 30 years than deal with those other ones. Got the second light in here. And I just wanna show you something. I went and turned off the power to what was labeled the master bathroom and master closet switch. And this did not turn off, so Always verify that you've turned off the power. This is obviously not off. So something else I forgot to mention, you need to have a knockout ring that looks like this. This clamps your cable is just going in and these have two optional knockout holes, that and that. So position it how you need to to remove it. Okay, so here's how this thing is wired. Here is my original electrical box, right here. So I took one Romex piece, added it to that, to the halo box here, and they have push connectors. You can see all the whites are able to push together. So I have one Romex coming in and connecting white to white, black to black, ground to ground, and then one Met Romex going back out, serving the other light fixture. And it is buried way down under the eighth there. So that Romex comes along here, and it goes up to here. Using that connector I showed you to clamp in, I'm not gonna be able to get you in that box, but it's very simple. The black goes to black, uh, white goes to white and the green goes to green on this one and I just use the wire nuts on that You might notice one more thing. So I also Covered this thing with uh, uh, Aluminum tape because there's whoever cut this hole was terrible and there was tons of air gaps So think about that when you're doing it uh, A couple other things Romex staples make sure you put those in there Don't screw them up like I do or you need to double them up So after getting this thing wired up from below, just like I showed earlier, I went to go stuff it back in the ceiling to finally test it out. And it was about at this point where I realized why in the wide world of walruses was this not fitting in this box? Screws weren't lining up. Guess it's time to learn something. 
Here's a newer model sealing box. And as you can see, there's four screws, which represent two different widths of screw spacing that you can have. Now that's two and three quarters on the skinny side and three and a half on the wide side. And my house is a 90s kid, so it only had one size screws. And that size is not compatible with the occupancy sensor I had. So long story short, learn from my mistake. Normally you would use a cross strap like you see here if you were going to put a light fixture up. But because this occupancy sensor sits inside the box, that's not an option here. Uh, that cross strap would get in the way. So solution, go back to the store, buy a regular octagonal box or a round serialing box like you saw in this picture here and redo the whole thing. So that's what I did. Here's me just removing, getting all the wiring out of the air, removing the two screws. And those two screws allowed this little clamp to just pop right off, no problem. Next step was removing the box. It pulled out pretty easily. So I mounted this boy up here. I just used some self-tapping screws to screw through this thing to reuse it. And one big one here just to make sure this thing held on. Oh, here it is uh, after all the stuff has been stuffed back in the box. Got my new electrical box and I should have pulled the knockout first and fed the wires through before mounting it, but I leave you learn. Here is the setup from below again, just like before. And since this thing didn't sit exactly flush, so it's not my favorite. So I'm gonna have to get some screws that come down further if possible to hook that thing on there. The other thing that I had to figure out is since this hole is cut so badly and there's some tear out here, I need something to cover up this. So I took an old smoke alarm and this is the thing that sits up on the ceiling that hooks in with the smoke alarm and screws into the box. And I cut out pretty poorly a ring with a Dremel tool and it's roughly the same size as this guy. So. And it fits in there. I got all my wires stuffed in there. And it kind of just snaps in place. So that's going to give me a little bit more space as I screw in, screw this thing into the ceiling around to cover up that ring. And this just sits flush with the ceiling and goes up into the electrical box with this little lip here. Ended up working all right. It actually finally got sucked up there, and I'm pretty happy with how it looks. Well, let's go turn on some power. Now, as you could probably tell by the light in the room here, the lights do actually work. This is me putting the last finishing touch on this occupancy sensor, just a little cover to cover up the controls. And the light is extremely bright. It uh, lightens up our closet pretty well and the occupancy sensor works as intended here's me turning it off you can see it's in series so I can disable that light if I need to now when I turn it back on it takes about 30 seconds before it goes to occupancy mode I'm not sure why that is but oh wait there it turned off so um, one of the problems we were having was uh, when I walked right past it, it was turning on. So I ended up using this little fix. Here's the light turning on. I'm only a couple steps in, and that's due to the fact that you can see right here, put a little sliver of tape on there to kind of block that entry so I don't set it off while walking past. Overall, I'm very happy with how this project turned out. I love being able to walk in a room without having to whack the switch, and it turns off after five minutes after I leave. And as you can tell from the pictures, it very much brightens up the space. Some might even say it's a little too, too visible in there, but oh well. And it got the focus off that popcorn ceiling I so very much hated. 
If you feel like you can do this, I'd like you to try it too. Give me a comment if you have any questions or a like if you enjoyed it. Until next time, get out there and do stuff.